Hey YouTube, Milma here with another Xcode tutorial. Uh, in this Xcode tutorial, I will be doing another UI table view tutorial. Now, in this tutorial, I'll be teaching a couple of things. Um, the main one is going to be how to push a new view. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to push a new UI table view. However, it, it will be the same concept for whatever type of view you tried to push. So, if you tried to push a normal just UI view, that would work with the same process I'm going to teach you in this tutorial. Now, in this tutorial, I will also be teaching you how to load different types of data from different di different sets of arrays, uh, but with the same table view. Because in the last tutorial, I said that you can have multiple NS mutable arrays and load different ones depending on what you want. For instance, in this tutorial, we're going to be pushing our cat, dog, and snake arrays. And obviously, dogs are a lot different to cats, so we're going to have different types of dogs. So in our new view, we're going to have an array for our dogs, we're going to have an array for our cats, and an array for our snakes. And when they click on dogs, we'll tell our new table view to load dogs, dogs array. And so basically, we just have one view that will load three different data types depending on what you click. So I realised the last tutorial had to be split into two parts, um, so sorry for that guys, but I do blab on a bit. Um, so this tutorial well might well be split into two parts so this might be a regular thing for these tutorials because I blab on and on and on so I'm going to try and keep that to a minimum today although I've already started doing it so we'll get straight into the coding and everything yep yeah. so we need to create a new file or a new file for our uh, table view that we're going to make so a brand new UI view controller subclass and make sure it's a UI table view XIB we want one of them and I'm going to call this uh, Mm. Her pets table view controller. So this is going to be controlling our pets view. So in this view, first off, we need to create our, our arrays and we also need to create an integer. Now I'll tell you why the integer needs to be created in a minute. So I'll type all this out and I'll be back in a bit. All right, guys, I'm back. And as you can see, I've created three arrays here. The arrays obviously correspond with our pets that we have, dog, cat, and snake. And I also and I have also created a new integer called pets int. And I've also created a property of this integer, just property, at property, int, and then the name of the int, or the integer or number, whatever. So the reason we made this int is so that we can work out what uh, row in the other table view is being pressed. Because when a row gets pressed in the table view, we will tell this int to equal a certain number. So for instance, if dog gets uh, pressed, we will tell this int to equal zero. So when we're working in this view, we can actually just say if int equals zero, load dog array. So it just makes it a lot easier and a lot simpler for us. Uh, it will all become clear when we actually start coding. Now I've got one warning here, that's because I haven't synthesized the int. So if I go into the .m here, go right at the top, and just synthesize the pets int. So that's that done. Uh, now we can go straight into the view controller now, I mean the root view controller, sorry. And all we need to do in this one is go straight down to the bottom where it says void table view, your table view, table view, and the method's called basically did select row index path. And basically this is saying if someone presses on a row, what do you want me to do? And this is basically where we want to push the certain views. So there is a lot of code to go in here, and to push the certain view, we need to import the view. So to get this table view uh, that we just made, this new pets table view, we need to import it so we can get its properties. So we import and then pets table view controller dot h. So that's that done. Right at the top is just pound import. Um, so yeah, I'm going to type out all the code in here because there's a lot to do, and like I said, I don't want to make this tutorial too long for you guys. So I'm going to type it all out and I'll be back to you all right, soon. guys, I'm back. And as you can see, I've typed out a lot of code here. So let me just quickly go through it with you. So what we've done here, we've got our pets table view controller. We've created an instance of it and we've called it pets. And then we've just allocated it some memory and told it what its nib name is. So that's basically that. It's just pets table view controller. That's the actual nib name. Um, so that's just creating an instance of it so we can get its properties and stuff um, like the pets int that we made so here as you can see I've got three if statements and these three if statements correspond with our array that we've made and the array has dog, 
cat and snake. So as you can see here, we've just gone if pets array object at index index path dot row is equal to dog. That basically means that if the pets array, the array we've made, if the object that's being clicked on is equal to dog, then we want to load the view dog. But as we already have the view, and it's, it's not called dog, it's just the pets table view controller view, we want to make the pets int equal zero. So we can go into the pets table view controller dot m, and then we can go if it equals zero, load the dogs array. So that's how we're going to do it basically. So to get that integer, we go pets, the instance we just made up here, dot pets int, that's why we created a property of it, so we could actually get its values. And then we say is equal to, I mean not equal to, it's just equals zero. Pretty simple. And then this line here just sets the title for the new view. So we're going to go pets, the new view that's being pushed. Uh, set title, then it's going to be the pets array, the array we made in the start of this, uh, of the very first video uh, of this series, object at index, index path dot row. That basically means set the title to the button they press. So if they press dogs, set the title to dog. If they press cat, set the title to cat. So this is just an easier way of doing it rather than manually typing out cat because that would be, I uh, don't know what I just did there, that would just be time consuming. And that's exactly the same for all of these. Instead, the this is changed to cat and snake, and the integer has been increased by one each time. So we can, you know, see the difference between the different ones. Now, down here right at the bottom, we've actually told the navigation controller, remember that blue bar at the top, to push the new view controller, pets, the one we've made. And we want it to be animated because we want our user to be interested a bit more. And we're also going to release the pets to get rid of its memory so we don't get memory warnings and such. So that all all that code will be in the description so if you have any questions on it just ask me so now we can go into the pets table view controller dot m and now we can actually start setting up everything so the first thing we need to set up is our arrays we need to add all the content to our arrays so to do that i'm just going to go into the view did load and uh, i'll type it all out and i'll be back to you in a bit Alright guys, I'm done and I don't really want to spend too long in this section because I told you about it in the previous tutorial but basically all I've done is set up the arrays by going dog array or cat array or snake array equals ns mutable array alloc in it with objects and then I've just listed the objects here. Now this is a slightly different way of doing it from what I did in my previous tutorial where I said array add object, I just added the object straight away. It's just an easy way of doing it I think in my mind. Um, now, before we do anything, I'm just going to quickly de I mean, release all of these. So, dog array release. And uh, I'll be back in a minute once I've released all of these, just because, yeah. So, see you in a minute. Alright, I'm back. And, yeah, as you can see, I've just released them all, just to make sure I don't get any memory warnings. Good thing to do, good practice to do. So, down here in this number of sections in table view, now, remember in the last, ser uh, in the last tutorial, I explained all of these to you, so I don't really want to go over that again. But basically, the number of sections is going to be 1 again. And then in the number of rows in section, we've got to determine which uh, array it's trying to be loaded. Now, this is where our uh, where our pets int comes into play. Because we can go, if the pets int equals 0, that means it's going to be the dog array. So we're going to return the dog array count. If the uh, pets int equals 2, we're going to return the snake array count. So I hope you catch on to that. I'll type all that out and hopefully you'll understand what I mean. All right, guys, I'm back. And as you can see, I've just used three statements here. And um, yeah, basically it's going if the pets int equals zero. Now, remember, we set this integer in the root view controller when they click on the row. So if it equals zero, then it's going to be the dog array. So return the dog array count. If it equals one, cat array and two, snake array. Now, the last thing we have to do is make sure the table view reloads its data once it's done this because if it doesn't reload its data then it's not going to reload the amount of sections uh, I mean amount of rows and therefore it's just going to look rubbish and it's going to probably going to crash so make sure you type in this line here because we want it to reload the data and just a quick reminder if we go up here to the array um, I've just added an extra dog and got rid of a cat just to, just to let you know that it is actually working this new if statement method. It is actually changing the amount of rows in section. Okay, so the last thing we've got to do 
is the self or rower index path. Now again, I've already explained this, so I don't want to uh, stand here for ages explaining it. But again, we need to use our if statements to work out which, uh, again, which array we need to load. So, and, and set the text appropriately. So again, I'm going to type all that out and I'll be back in a bit. All right, guys, I'm back. And as you can see, I've just added, again, three other if statements. Just basically checking to see if it's the dog array we need to load, if it's the cat array, or if it's the snake array. And I just go cell dot text label dot text space equals space, just two open square brackets, dog array, object at index, index path dot row, and then close bracket and then retain and then close the other bracket. So I explained all this in the other series in the other tutorial, so please go check that out if you haven't already. And of course, we mustn't forget the nice disclosure indicator accessory that we can add, so I've added that line in there as well. Um, so that's all we're going to do for this tutorial. Now, I'm just going to build and run, and uh, hope it works, and I'll see you in a bit. Alright guys, I'm back, and as you can see, we have our thing built here. Now, it hasn't crashed yet, that's a good sign, but does it crash when we click on the cell? No, it doesn't, and uh, as you can see, it works perfectly fine, does that nice slide animation there. It loads the dogs we have, it makes the title dog, like we told it to, and it loads the four different array symbols. So if we go back up here, we can see we have the dog array, dog one, two, three, and four, like that. Now let's see if our if statements worked and returns the right amount of sections. Yep, we only have two cats, and that's perfectly fine. We have two cats, and the title says cat. And now just to double check, or triple check even, Snake works fine as well. So as you can see, all our text is labeled nicely. We have a nice title and we only used one view. So that's just a way that you can learn to push views and it's a way that you can learn to shorten down your coding, shorten down all your files and everything to make so so you can just use one view because I know many people would just use three separate uh, views. So for, each, for when you click on dog, it will load a separate view compared to cat. Whereas using this method, you can just use the same view and load a different array depending on what gets clicked on. So I hope that helped you guys. I hope I didn't run on too long and it didn't have to be split into two videos like the last one. Again, I'm sorry for that. Um, so, yep, thanks for watching. Uh, the next video will link here when it's out. And uh, it should hopefully be tomorrow or Sunday over the weekend this time, some sometime this weekend. Uh, anyway, um, so that will be about pushing the views for the dog. So I'm going to teach you how to push the new dog views that we've just made here. So when you click on dog one, it will load a, a new view with a picture of a dog in it, let's say. So, yeah, uh, look forward to that tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Uh, Annotations should appear here on the screen. And uh, if you could, just click on an ad in one on one or two of my videos because... That helps as well. So again, thanks for watching and see you in my next video.